there goes Lena. <laughs> Fellas are here already. Are you Fred Sanford? Yeah. Excuse me a moment. Uh. <laughs> oh. Please, please don't have another heart attack. I didn't expect you. But I told you I'd be here. Didn't you? Didn't you believe me? Yeah, but I, I just didn't. Are you all right now? I'm okay now. You know something? You ought to do something about those heart attacks. I am. I'm saving up for a heart transplant. <laughs> <laughs> and anyway, I've got to get that plane, so where's little one? Who? Oh, uh, yeah, uh, he's upstairs. Oh, is he asleep? Yeah, he just went to sleep. Oh, I'm so sorry. I could have helped put him into his jammies. <laughs> Yeah, he would have liked that. <laughs> hey, Pop, I think we better get out of here. Pop, did he say Pop? Is that Little Lamont? Oh. <laughs> I think I'm having one, Pop. My very first one. I oh, know. This is little Lamont. What? Little lame Lamont. What? what is this story you told me, Mr. Sanford? I thought you had a little son. I do. He'll always be my little son. Well, of all the low, down, rotten tricks, getting me out here by telling me you had a little boy who was lame. Lame? Yeah, lame. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Well, you don't have to be lame in the leg. You could be lame somewhere else. <laughs> You told her I was lame. Lame, that's what he said, you lame. And after I told you where I had to go and why I was in such a hurry, and now I'm gonna miss my plane and it's all your fault. Well, all I wanna say to you is thank you very much. Little Horn! Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's really Lita. It's her all over. <laughs> Who are these, Little Lamont's little playmates? <laughs> Horn. Man, you must have jiving her. You really did it. I knew her right away. Yeah. Well, well, good night, fellas. Miss Horn has got to get a plane. Oh, now, wait a minute, Fred. You won the bet. We owe you 15 bucks a piece. Oh. Hey, I got the money right here for all of us. Yeah, a bet's a bet now. Bet? Did you say a bet? Yeah. Fred bet us 15 bucks a piece. He can get you to come to his house tonight and son of a gun if he didn't do it. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Lying, jiving, conniving. Wait a minute, wait a minute now. You gotta let me explain. See, see, hey, let me explain. When you told me that you had to fly to San Francisco to do a benefit for Operation Head Start, then I got to thinking, I got some friends that might want to make a donation. So to make sure that all of them had some money when they got here, that's why I bet them. And, and here's all the money here right now with our compliments. And thank you, much. Where's your 15, Pop? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, really real. It's, it's real. Yeah, don't you love it? Oh, oh what can I say? Oh, this is wonderful. <laughs> Thank you very much. Wait a minute, Miss Horn. Here's my fifth place. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Lamont. I take it you don't approve of your father and I getting married. Do you mind telling me why? Because it's ridiculous, that's why. He's too old, and you're gonna be miserable. What kind of life is it being the wife of an old man? What kind of life do you think it is being the father of a young dummy? Don't call me a young dummy. You are a young dummy. You ain't gonna try to tell me nothing about my I don't wanna talk to her. Please, will you? Please stop it. Lamont, I think you owe your father an apology. And I owe him one across his lip. <laughs> After all, he is your father, and I think you ought to show some respect. Tell that dummy. And Fred, you be quiet. What? 
You only make things worse. Now, your son has a right to his opinion, and he has a right to defend his mother, so be quiet. Listen, you don't tell me how to talk to my son, woman. And don't you raise your voice at me, Fred Sanford. I'll raise my voice when I get ready. Not to me, you won't. You and anybody else. You don't tell me when to raise my voice. I ain't taking no stuff off my first wife, and I ain't gonna take none off you either. <laughs> She died so young. Well, you know, man, your husband didn't live too long either, did he? I am glad I found out about your bad temper. And I'm glad I found out about your big mouth. If you will excuse me, I'll just get my coat. Uh, Donna, wait a minute. Where are you going? I'm leaving. I don't see any reason to stay on, do you? Listen, I didn't mean to upset you. Uh, now, you gonna let a little argument Ruin all our plans. You said some very nasty things to me, Fred. Very nasty. But we're supposed to be compatible. See, you'd be different if you was tar as the bull. <laughs> You're not a bull. You Leo the lion. Well, that's true. Well, will you stay? If you're really and truly sorry. I really am truly sorry. Honestly? Honestly. <laughs> all right, then. I'll stay. Oh, great. Gee whiz. Come on back over here and sit down. Uh, hey, son, I took back all the things I said about Dinah. Now, everything's all right again. Oh, really? Even the part about how she's over the hill? <laughs> Who said that? He did last night when he was talking about you. What you want to bring that up for? <laughs> well, as long as you're taking stuff back, you might as well take it all back. There's no need to starting off your marriage with secrets between you. Did you say that about me? I don't remember. If I said it, I didn't mean it the way it sounded. But just how did you mean it? Well, I, I might have said, you know, for somebody that was over the hill, you wasn't bad. <laughs> and, and if you put on some dark glasses, people wouldn't be able to see them bags under your eyes. <laughs> well, I think that just about does it. Well, what's the matter? The matter is that you're very much out of line, Mr. Sanford. Well, if you think you're gonna shut me up every time I get ready to say something, then you forget about the whole thing, Mrs. Harris. That's fine with me. I'm leaving. Bye. I should have realized you had the manners of a common junk man. And I should have realized that you weren't over the hill, you down in the valley. <laughs> Leo the lion, you down at a barracuda. <laughs> I should have known she was going to turn out like that. Yeah, it's a good thing you found out in time, Pop. Yeah, I ain't going to let no woman walk over me. Yeah, you really stood up to her. You have to. You have to. I was proud of you, Pop. You got to get things straightened out right in the beginning. Right. Right. <laughs> you know, son, I don't remember saying she was over the hill. You don't, huh? No. Well, I was sure you did. Hey, Pop, did, uh, what's your name make any dessert? Yeah, she made some hot sweet potato pie. Like your mama used to make. I hope it's better than mama used to make. I'll get it. Hello, police. Listen, I, I was wondering if you have a report of an injured old man within the last hour or so. Well, see, the old man happens to be... To Never mind, thank you. <laughs> Can I believe her when she tells me so? Is she fooling? Is she just forgetting? <laughs> yeah, you know, that's, that's the way son Tim with, with the Orioles used to sing that number. Then they go, am I the fire? <laughs> or just another play? <laughs> I, I, I hit it one more time for you. Am I the fire? <laughs> or just another play? <laughs> Do you have any idea what time it is? I didn't know what time it was <laughs> until I met you. You're just full of songs tonight, aren't you? And what else are you full of, Muscatel? No, we were drinking Muscatel and Ripple. In fact, I call it Muscatipple. <laughs> And where have you been? And don't tell me you've been sitting with no sick friend, either. Well, if she was, she's all right now. <laughs> you 
you was out with a woman? Yes, I was out with a woman. Who you think I'd be out with this time of night? Fast Domino? <laughs> and I just called the police to find out if they had any record of an engine old man. All I really had to worry about was a dirty old man. <laughs> Don't say that. She was a nice lady. And where'd you meet this nice lady? At a Swedish massage parlor? <laughs> or did you answer one of them ads in the paper? Lonely young woman wants to meet silly old man. <laughs> Object, rip off. <laughs> now, don't talk like that about Mrs. Edwards. She's a nice lady, and she's got class. Yeah, Mrs. Edwards might have class, but what you gotta worry about is whether Mr. Edwards has a gun. <laughs> there ain't no Mr. Edwards. She's divorced, and I don't want to talk about it. I'm going to bed. No, you don't. You ain't going traipsing off the bed and have me sit down here worrying about you half the night. Now, what is this? Is this something serious or what? Yes, it's serious. I'm in love with her. I think this is it. Oh, no. Oh, yes. It's not something that just happened to young people, you know? Old folks got feelings. And old folks got plenty of feelings. It's just because a prune is wrinkled don't mean that it ain't tasty. <laughs> well, who is this old prune, anyway? I'm talking about me. Yeah, well, you're an old prune, all right. Well, she likes it. In fact, she said I was the nicest guy she ever met in her whole life. <laughs> she must have had a hard life. <laughs> oh, I don't want to talk about this. You're going to make fun of the woman and everything. OK, Pop. Your... No, it's all, right, all right, all kidding aside now. now. Now, what is this about? Now, what about Donna? Aren't you engaged to the Barracuda? <laughs> yes, I'm engaged to her. So what? So what? You gave her an engagement ring. What about that? Well, I'll ask her to give it back to me. What if she doesn't? Well, then I'll tell her she got to keep making the payments herself. <laughs> Shut up. I don't understand this. I really don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. You come in here, you come in here singing. I don't understand you, Pop, and I don't understand this whole thing. Well, you might as well try to understand. It happens all the time. What about when, when Elizabeth Taylor left Eddie Fisher for Richard Burton? <laughs> And what about when Ingrid Bergman left her husband for that Italian fella, Mussolini? <laughs> it was Rossellini. And anyway, those people are in show business. Well, junk business is like show business. If I got some junk, I got to show it, else I'm out the business. <laughs> then, it, then this whole thing is settled, huh? Well, it's just about. She's coming here tomorrow. She might as well come and see what her future home looks like. And hey, remind me to spray the place real good. Well, why? Is she moving in here? Not she. They. She has two little children. <laughs> Mrs. Edwards is young enough to have little children? What's her first name, Lolita? <laughs> well, Jackie and Onassis did it, so just say that we are another Jackie and Onassis. <laughs> living happily ever after on some Greek island. The old prune and his young tomato living on figs. <laughs> Donna, darling, it's Ready Freddy. Fred, what are you doing here? What do you mean, what I'm doing here? It's Saturday night, ain't it? You belong to me, and I belong to you. And who belongs to this cigar? Fred, that cigar belongs to my date tonight. A date? I mean, you got a lot of nerve having a date on Saturday night. Well, Fred, I'm sorry, but you didn't say anything about coming over tonight. And after all, you don't own me. I know I don't own you, but I made nine years worth of payments. <laughs> I mean, where is he? Where is this guy? Bring him out here. I face him man to man, fist to fist, and face to face. Just bring him on out here to show him to me. That's all. Just... <laughs> Hey, say, listen, buddy, you lucky. I was gonna give you some of these across your lips. But it's against my principle to hit a man, to hit a man with, uh, with glasses. Uh, Lou, this is Fred Sanford. Fred, meet Lou Turner. Pleased to make your acquaintance, I'm sure. Why don't we all have a nice glass of wine? I'll get the glass. What are you trying to do there? I mean, you don't get no milk out of that. <laughs> Listen, Lou, uh, let me make this as simple as possible for you. See, Donna and I don't stand on all that old etiquette stuff, so you can feel free at any moment to get the hell out of here. Fred, that's not polite. Please, please sit down. Here, 
there, Fred. <laughs> Here's some nice imported wine Lou brought over from his liquor store. Oh, yeah? Well, I don't drink nothing. Ain't got no label on it. <laughs> I put the wine in the decanter to allow it to breathe. Breathe. <laughs> that is correct. You see, fine wines must be decanted. They have a limited life in the bottle. Five years for white wine, 50 to 60 for Burgundy, and approximately 50 to 100 for Bordeaux. And three days for 7-Up. <laughs> that is the most ridiculous thing I have ever heard. That's the most ridiculous thing you ever heard, uh, is it? Uh, Fred, Fred, look at this, uh, look at this pamphlet Lou brought over. It's all about the Senior Olympics this year. What's that? Athletic events for persons of 50 and over. Oh. I, oh, I remember that. Uh, on your mark, get set ready, keel over. <laughs> well, Sanford, for your information, in order to participate in the Senior Olympics, one must be sound of mind, fleet of foot, and in excellent physical condition. I do 100 push-ups every day. Well, here, add nothing to that. Shove your lips up your nose. <laughs> Lou won the decathlon last year. And I have every intention of winning it again this year. Listen, I've had enough of this chit-chat. Now, Donna, you gotta make a decision. Now, who do you want? Me, who's been faithful for you all these years, or this wine old come lately? Now, look here. <laughs> you look here, Sanford. No, buddy, you look here. Listen, you want me to decant my fist upside your face? <laughs> right. Fool. Who's a fool? Say that outside to me. Come on outside and say that. I'd be happy to. Well, come on in. Lou, Fred. Don't worry about nothing. I'll take care of myself. Oh. Kid, listen. Fred. Fred. <laughs> Is that right here? See, grammar scene and escort service. Fred, I don't think we should go through with this. What do you mean? You not only gonna have a date for Saturday night, but you're gonna get paid for it, and so will I. Is this Mr. Carmen? Oh, this is Mrs. Willis of the Gramercy Escort Service. Well, you're to meet Ms. Nolan at the party at 8 o'clock. Yes, and it's black tie. I'm Thanks. in trouble, Fred. Well, I don't have a black tie. Well, you got black paint? Yeah. Well, I'll make you a black tie. Yeah. <laughs> But Lamont said these escort places only hire certain kind of men. I'm that kind of man. Oh, yes? Suave, debonair. What is he doing? That's my friend banging his suave into this debonair. <laughs> Can I get you something? Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, Sanford's the name. Escorting is my game. You want to be a Gramercy escort? Does President Ford need a personality? <laughs> you really want to be an escort? Lady, we'll escort anything without a mustache. Now, when do we report? <laughs> <laughs> Well, actually, I don't think that you're what I'm looking for. I don't think you're what anyone's looking for. Well, I'll have you know, we'd be perfect escorts. Oh, do you dance? Yes. Can you waltz? Certainly. Good. Then why don't the two of you waltz on out of here? Listen, why can't we be escorts? Oh, I'm sorry. I should explain. You can't be escorts because you simply don't have the experience. We got experience? My name is Fred G. Sanford. You know what the G is for? What? Gigolo. <laughs> and my friend here, Elroy, his nickname is Big Hand, Little Hand. Big Hand, Little Hand? Yes, yeah, service around the clock. Ah. <laughs> Marvelous. And I think I'm running out of time for both of you. Oh, don't worry about that. If you ever need more time, look at the clock. It'll stop. <laughs> Mr. Sanford, I don't find you the least bit amusing. And I'm afraid that neither of you fulfill our requirements. Good day. Wait a minute. What requirements? Well, here. See for yourself. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. They're well read. Oh, well, I read all the time. 
Are you familiar with ladies' home junk and house and garbage? <laughs> the majority of our escorts are professional men. Now there, you're not a professional man, are you, Mr. Sanford? Uh, that's Dr. Sanford. Uh, my bag's in the truck, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> if you're a doctor, then I'm an airline pilot. I can believe that. <laughs> I can believe that by the excess baggage in your tail section. I think you had better leave. Let's go, Fred. No, no. Not until she gets us a planned date. Are you kidding? My clients wouldn't be seen in public with you. That doesn't matter to me. I'll take them to the junkyard and dance with them. <laughs> Mr. Sanford, if I hired you as an escort, I'd become the laughing stock. Okay. Well, I return to my junkyard and you return to your stockyard. 